So you're fired up, you're excited, you're actually putting in work. You're putting in some time, you're putting in some energy, you're seeing some results, but you start saying, Matt, I'm actually starting to spend time away from my family, away from my friends, away from my social life. Is this worth it? So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to overcome the guilt of working towards your multi-million dollar dreams. Happening right now. All right, what's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from the headquarters of the Seven Figure Squad, based here in Oak Brook, Illinois, just a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I want to reference one of the comments one of you made on our last video, a couple of videos ago, about this conversation. So, Cindy Gamboa says on her comments, I love what you're doing with the Seven Figure Squad. You're so compassionate with the info you give the public. Can you tell me how do you deal with the guilt of family time? is you try to create and work and build your business. Cindy, I appreciate your comment. I appreciate you giving us feedback. You know, one of the things that I realized, building up my business, coming from nowhere, without a pedigree, without a trust fund, without an inheritance, without a, head, a financial head start in my life, I had to do the first thing, I had to do a reality check. What's that reality check? I had to do an assessment of who I was, financially speaking, and I really had to figure out what my budget was and what my aspirations are. Because here's the reality check. Are we really thriving? Are we getting ahead in our lives? I wasn't. Are we really living paycheck to paycheck or do we have some money left over? Are we really comfortable or are we just settling? Am I thriving or I'm just surviving? So what I did is I went to this website called epi.org, an economic policy institute, which is a nonprofit based out of DC. And I went in there to discover the cost of living, okay? I'm living in Chicago. I was, uh, I spent uh, my uh, uh, late teens, early 20s in Southern California when I was serving in the United States Marines. I was living in Orange County. I was thinking about moving to Dallas. I was thinking about moving to Florida, but I'm giving you three cities comparing Chicago, San Francisco, and Dallas, okay? So let's take a look. Housing, the average house for a two adult household, husband and wife, or boyfriend and girlfriend, raising their two kids, Household income, household costs for housing for Chicago land area, metro, uh, metropolitan area, housing is $1,180 a month. Now, some of you guys are saying, where? Where in Chicago can you get an apartment for $1,180 a month? How much is your apartment there in Little Village? $1,100. $1,100. Bucks. Okay, I, I, there, there's my point. Little Village. Some of you guys know what Little Village is. It's, it's what we call Little Mexico over here. But uh, Ivan's apartment is $1,180. In, in San Francisco, you know what the average apartment is? $3,100. <laughs> Dallas, Texas, $1,077. Food, $739 in Chicago, $998 in San Francisco, $723 in Dallas. Child care, here's where the big check goes out. Housing, kids, uh, 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 um, uh, food, transportation. But child care is $1,537 for child care for two kids. San Francisco, $1,730. Dallas, $1,044. Let's go to transportation. Gas, car payment, $1,054 in Chicago, San Francisco, $1,114. Uh, $1, Dallas Metro, $1,115. Healthcare, $1,053 in Chicago, $1,152 in San Francisco, $973 in Dallas. Make a long story short, the average income that you need to live on in Chicago is $7,378. Two, two adults, two kids. Uh, 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 San Francisco, just to make, just to make ends meet, just to survive in San Francisco, $12,370 a month. Anything less than that, I would consider is low income. There's this article here I want to, sh I want to show you that $117,000 in the nine counties of the San Francisco area is considered low income, $117,000 a year. Dallas metro area, monthly income that you need to live on to, to adults, Two kids living in a house, six thousand two ninety one. Of the three, Dallas is the least expensive to live in at seventy five thousand four eighty eight, just to pay the bills, just to say, you know what? I'm not necessarily not necessarily thriving, but hey, I'm surviving. I'm paying the bills. So the question you got to ask yourself: Listen, for me, the question I was asking myself, I was a single dad. I had three kids I was responsible for. I uh, have no college degree. I could not literally wait to go to college, get a degree, and hopefully after four or five years later, I get a job. 
I get a job at over $70,000, $80,000 a year. I hopefully get a job. There's too much hope. There's not enough predictability in that equation for me. So one of the things that I had a reality check was if the average income household in the big city, do I relocate to like Nebraska? Do I relocate to like Florida? Well, I'm relocating away from my support network, friends, family, or, or the people I was familiar with. So I had to factor in that decision. And so, you know what? I said, you know, make, the, make this decision to stay put. Here's the other thing. Wages since 1999, 2019. The wages that people have experienced since 2019 all the way back to 1999. Guess what? You think it's increased, decreased? It's remained stagnant. So if I'm depending on a job, if I'm depending on a boss, if I'm depending upon a company with no upside potential, no conversation to say, how do I get a piece of this company? How do I get a, a, a great equalizer bonus for my position in my company? How do, how do I do that without just, just depending on and saying I'm okay with salary, which obviously is just enough to survive, but not enough to thrive? Well, stagnation has entered wages and income in America. So if I was just to settle, I'd be guilty in this position because what's my scenario? I had three jobs. So I had to get real with my situation. I had to deal with my reality check. You got to deal with your reality check. Let me go on to some of the questions that you should consider processing to as well. So here, here's my first major question. Are you clear on what life you want to live? What life do you want? What type of, what type of activities? How many kids do you want? How, what type of activities? Are they going to enjoy sports, ballet, martial arts, cheerleading, I don't know, uh, um, uh, ministry activities, youth activities with the church? What type of activities do you want your kids to enjoy? And you, mom and dad said, okay, I can cut a check and go to that camp. I can cut a check and get you these uniforms. I can cut you that check and get you some shoes. I can cut you a check to get some personalized training. I can cut you a check and you can enjoy this experience, senior trip, or whatever the case may be, or, or summer camp this, or winter camp this. What type of neighborhood do you want to live in? You know, every, everybody, when I, every, every time I say, I'm from Chicago, people are like, ooh, what are you talking about? Ooh, are you okay over there? I hear there's a lot of gunshots. Oh, you're talking about Chirac. You're talking about certain parts of our city where there's, there's violence and, 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 and shootings, right? Well, I said, you know what? I want to move personally for me. If that's the case, I wanted to create an opportunity for me through this reality check to increase my income, to work hard in my business or my career, to say, you know what? I want to move up and out of that unsafe neighborhood and completely go away from that type of opportunity for my family to get hurt. I want to get away, I want to get away from the crime. Safety, safety of the neighborhoods. I wanted to make sure that my children were going to good schools that I had my kids going to uh, 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 travel, uh, travel opportunities, travel teams. My kids could go to experiences uh, with us. I was going on vacations. Uh, retirement, what type of retirement do I want? Do I want to retire in my 70s? If I ask you right now, what age do you want to retire? I bet you some of you guys will say your 30s, 40s, or 50s. The better question I should ask you is, well, how much money do you have tucked away and saved up? Nothing. So how do you expect to retire in your 30s, 40s, and 50s? And yet you feel guilty about working hard in your business? Personal interest. What type of personal interest? What type of contributions? Do you want to be a more of a, a role, an active role in the Democratic Party, in the Republican Party, in politics, in your ministry, in church, in charity, drilling for, uh, drilling for uh, uh, wells in India? Uh, my sister, she, she has a nonprofit to fight human trafficking across the world. What type of activities and personal interest do you want to be a part of? What type of life do you want to live? So ask yourself this question. The last 10, 15 decisions you've made, okay? The last 10, 15 decisions you made. Are you ready? Okay. How many of them, those decisions, have been related to money? Have been related to money? Listen, I, I'm wearing this shirt because I'm proud to be an American, even though on the inside I have the DNA of being a Filipino. But I'll tell you this. When money was brought up in our family, I never knew what my parents really made, what they earned. The conversation of money was never talked about in our house. All, all the, the assumption was to go to college, hopefully make a name for myself and, and be successful in life. That's practically it. And I've been having a conversation with my kids since their sixth, seventh grade. What do you want to be? What do you want to become? So therefore they can get clear. 
And so therefore they can start making decisions which lead up to this conversation about what type of life do you want? Are you getting clearer and clearer as the years goes by as you start to explore and evolve and discover your talents and your gifts? But think about this. The decisions that you made, the last 10, 15 decisions you made, how many of them have been related to money? I'll give you an example. Uh, I remember uh, uh, it was a very bad financial year for me. And um, at this time, I didn't have a car. I'm going through all Chicago. I'm going to church. And uh, I took the train. Taking the train, take it to downtown, take the metro. And uh, I just had enough money to take the train. I didn't have money, enough money to take a cab or the bus to take to the church, which is another mile and a half walk from the train station. And it's December. And so I, I, I get to the train station. I didn't feed my kids breakfast because we're rushing out of the house to get to church. It's an hour train ride, you know, a couple, couple connections. Make a long story short, my kids come out, Poppy, I'm hungry. Poppy, I'm, I'm, I'm cold. And I'm like, how come you didn't wear your hat? I told you to grab your hat. And here I am blaming them about what they should have done, but I'm the parent. I'm the one in charge. And I'm like, you know what? Let's get inside. We go inside, it's warm. I find myself in a Jimmy John's. And, and the kids are hungry. I'm like, all right, oh, let me get the oh, food. Okay, I pull out my wallet and I'm just praying, Lord, please allow my credit card to go through at least $12. I don't know exactly what my balance is, but please let me get at least $12 so I can order a Tom Tom with some chips and a cup of water. Not the bottled water, but a cup of water I can just fill up at the, at the soda station. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at my credit card, that long stare as I handed it to him, hopefully praying that my credit card goes through. My kids are waiting, they don't know what's going on. The, they, uh, the cashier says, okay, boom, okay, waits for it to go through. And I'm like holding my breath. And next thing the cashier goes, okay, here you go. I'm like, thank God my credit card went through. How many times have you been in those type of situations? And we're sitting down, we grab our food. Uh, I felt like uh, the communion, I, 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 I busted the, uh, the, the sub sandwich in half. I remember taking one bite. I remember giving it to the kids. The kids, knock yourself out. The chips, food, they devoured the Tom Tom Jimmy John Subway sandwich. It was at that moment, I was looking at them, I looked at our situation and said, this will never happen to me ever again. The pain got so deep that I decided to actually change and actually follow through with this decision to say, you know what? This is never gonna happen to me again. This has never happened to my family. The kids don't necessarily know what's going on. They're eating right now, but I know what's going on. That was my big decision. So my question to you is, it may not be as drastic as that or even more drastic than what I just talked about. Whatever your situation is, is your decision going to say, you know what, let me just survive, allow that to continue to happen, or say, you know what, I'll put my foot in the, in the ground, and say, you know what, I'm making a pivot, I'm making an adjustment, and I'm going to thrive. Second thing, what sacrifices are you willing to make? What sacrifices? Well, you know, somebody says, uh, uh, there, there's a guy that says, man, well, I asked him, what do you want to be? He goes, I want to be a multimillionaire. But every weekend, I find him, in, I find him instead of working, I find him downtown at the boat parties, we call here the playground, and I'm, what are you doing? You say you want to work, you say you want to be a multimillionaire, but I find you playing all the time. You're like completely disrespecting this process of becoming a six-figure earner, in this case, a seven-figure income. If you told me you want to be a seven-figure earner, then why are you making these foolish decisions instead of grinding and working? What, you think you got time? Probably the, 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 the downside for a lot of people to think they got a lot of time. And I hope that this COVID-19 pandemic situation has exposed to you that time, sadly, not only does it wait for nobody, but time tomorrow can be taken away. In the meantime, what sacrifices are you willing to make to build your business, to start thriving instead of just surviving? You know, hold up before I continue with the rest of this video. If you have been getting some value out of this video, please click like below. Please hit subscribe to join our YouTube channel, the Seven Figure Squad community. And uh, our next goal is to not only get to 17,000 subs, but also get to 25,000, that's our next goal. And what are we doing? Three lucky winners of the Seven Figure Squad community will receive a prize from me to you once we get to 25,000 subs. For those that comment, for those that share, for those that stay engaged in our community, and Ali, what are we giving? So we're giving them a book. Your Next Five Moves by my mentor, CEO of PHP Agency, Patrick Bet David. This book 
these concepts inside, not only is this book signed on 9-11 by Patrick but David, but these strategies, these moves has allowed my wife in the last five and a half years to earn over $5.4 million. Also, on top of that, we've got a backpack of the Seven Figure Squatch merch that we're launching. You get a backpack filled of merchandise, filled of hats and, uh, and, and shirts, etc. And the number one prize not only gets the book, not only gets the backpack, but the number one prize gets a silver precious metal starter set from me to you, from my gold dealer to you, not only will we get the Patrick B. Davis signed book, the number one, income, uh, the number one um, uh, 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 subscriber we choose is also going to get a backpack full of merchandise, but also a silver starter set once we reach 25,000 subs on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe below. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Things that you need to consider. What type of babysitters do I, do I need to have? How many, how many uh, do I need to hire a full-time nanny? In-living nanny, uh, somebody that comes in at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning and leaves at 8, 9 o'clock at night. Uh, who works? Does husband work? Wife work? Both work? What about the business? Does one work the business that we're starting? Both work the business that we're starting? Husband stays home? Do we, do we switch? Is there some operations that the husband or wife can do at home to prepare the other spouse to go out there and do the sales, to actually go out there and do the legwork, even though one of the spouses has to stay home temporarily to watch the kids while the business is still running, while the restaurants are still open, or when your insurance practice is still growing? These are things you have to consider. Or do I, do I hire babysitters or do I hire nanny so both of us can leave the house, one can run operations, one can run sales and marketing, and boom, they're both running the business. But you need help. What sacrifices are you willing to make? I, uh, I was uh, sharing with somebody earlier, uh, the, before we hired an actual assistant, we called them a base shop coordinator inside our, inside our company, and, or an executive assistant or a licensing coordinator to help our newest uh, agents get a, uh, uh, get a license, uh, get into pre-licensing course and get appointed with our insurance carriers. Before we hired those positions, the first people we hired was three babysitters, actually two babysitters, before we hired a third one and we went to a full-time nanny. So we rotated between two, three different babysitters until we said, you know what, let's put the budget together so we can put the time into the business. And then say, you know, let's go to full-time nanny. Why? I didn't want my wife, this, by the way, this is just my situation. I'm not saying I'm not trying to impart this upon you, but this is something you should probably consider. But you know what? I didn't marry my wife for her cooking skills. <laughs> my wife, babe, love you. Sheena's got some massive, like, like undeniable Skills on ordering DoorDash. Unbelievable DoorDash skills. Unbelievable Uber Eats. Boom. Right. There. Boom. Like one, one finger, two finger. <laughs> Listen, I didn't marry her for her cooking skills. I married her for her brain, her spirit, her ability to process issues, her ability to change and improve and grow. I mean, by the way, this is my wife over here. I decided, you know what? Let me, let me get down with the craziness. Let me commit to my wife. Softball player, University of Pittsburgh, got her degree in finance. We decided to get married. That was our decision. So say, you know what? Let me commit to you. I, I wouldn't say that's a sacrifice, but uh, that was a, that was commit. I'll get I'll get I'll get to that later on. But this is one of the things that you have to consider: working from home, working at the office, or working a business or a career together. What sacrifices are we willing to make in this trend going forward? Next question you need to ask yourself and process: How are you going to celebrate the fruits of your labor? What are you going to enjoy? And so. You put these into uh, different superficial things, perhaps. Maybe some things are rewards. You got to figure out how you're driven. Do you want to buy a new car? Do you want to buy a new home? You want to go to a specific college? You want to go to a specific program? You want to do some? You want to have the financial resource to do some campus visits? You want, you want to make sure you put yourself into prep class, uh, SAT prep class. I don't think they use ACT anymore, but uh, I remember myself and my kids went through an ACT. Uh, do you want to take some uh, special courses? For example, our son at uh, eight, nine years old was going through some coding camps to learn how to build his own Minecraft games, right? Because that's what he loved to do. Not only just play video games, but also build the games. And he, he gave us a pitch on how he's going to pitch the, uh, the creative Minecraft, how he's going to create a better experience for the Minecraft users. But that, that's, how, uh, that's how he got exposed to that type of thinking. The biggest, by the way, the biggest thing for you to be a cash flow first generation millionaire is exposure, Exposure to a bigger life. If all you know is the eight blocks you grew up in here in Chicago, if all you know is your borough, if all you know is your farm and the next farm over, if that's all you know, 
you know, you're not exposing yourself to the best that life has to offer because it's, when you get exposed to things, you become aware to things. When you become aware to things, you can decide whether you want them or you not want them and decide what type of worker, in this case, sacrifices you're willing to deploy and what type of enjoyment and celebration you get to have when you accomplish certain milestones in your business, in your progress. What type of, uh, what type of uh, um, family contribution are we going to celebrate this with? So for example, uh, we waited, we stacked cash, we stacked cash, we stacked cash to babe. Okay, fine, we started crossing half a million dollars in income. Finally, we got rid of our 2007, or the 2008, 2009, I can't remember what it was, a Cadillac Escalade, every time you open the door, the, the, the hinges would say pop, pop. I mean, we're so broke, we didn't even have the time or the attention to put WD-40 inside the hinges, but every time you open up that passenger side door, pop, pop, so embarrassing, the whole neighborhood would hear it. So we decided to finally sell it, and we finally upgraded to Sheena's Cadillac Escalade. She my wife loves Escalade. She goes, I feel so, I feel so high and safe. It's my wife. For me, what did I get? I got a Mercedes SL 550 AMG. The guy brought it, they delivered it to our office. Matte black, looked like the Batmobile, right? And eventually upgraded to, uh, 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 um, eventually upgraded to a Rolls Royce, whatever. But we stacked cash, we crossed seven figures before we started to enjoy a lot of these things, but we are stacking cash and reinvesting back into the business and actually putting time into it. So uh, I remember we, we, went, we went on a trip. One of the fruits of labor, we go on company trips. We go on, on, on vacations. And one of the kids were sitting in Cancun and Jojo was sitting on my lap. We were eating breakfast at this buffet. Awesome experience. The first time I experienced an all-inclusive resort, I didn't know what an all-inclusive, I didn't know what all-inclusive meant until we went out an all-inclusive resort. And anyway, make a long story short, we're eating and uh, I asked Jojo, I've, I've never coached him to say this. I said, Jojo, what does Poppy do? Poppy helps people. Watch this clip. We help people live. And make what? And make what? So you see, without coaching, our at that time 78 year old son was exposed to the environment of dealing with people, of being around people who thought on much level, much higher level than what my wife and I were raised around. Because oftentimes you're going to get everybody giving you a hard time. You know, we get back into sacrifices and, and, and uh, a celebration. We're going to get to commitment here in a second. But part of the celebration is, hey man, you get to enjoy some of the fruits of your labor. What's that going to be? I said, husband, wife, honey, let's sit down. If I do this, what are we going to enjoy? Kids, if you allow mommy and poppy to go to work, we might not be there for all the, remember, I remember telling my kids, hey, uh, uh, babe, I'm not going to be there for all your practices, but I'll be there for practice. I might not be there for all your games, but I'll be at the games. I may not be there for pregame, but I'll be at the game. You'll see me in the stands. You can count on that. I may not be there for the pre-stuff, but I'll be there for the actual game. I'll be there for the track meets. I'll be there for the times you're cheerleading. I'll be there the times you're on the sidelines uh, when you're uh, 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 on the sidelines waiting for you to get into the game. I'll be there for those football times. I'll be there for those moments. I'll be the loud dad in the stands cheering you on, okay? And to this day, my kids, to this day, have experiences of me being the loud dad in the stands and the, co and the coach is laughing at me, cheering on my kids. But these are the things that we're able to celebrate. Now, I realized early on, I realized early on, my kids probably aren't going to be professional athletes. Although I'm six foot three as a, as a Filipino, uh, my three older kids, they didn't get the tall gene. They, and, and I wasn't that athletic. My wife is more athletic than I am. So my kids probably had to use their, 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 their heart power to build themselves into a career, uh, their brain power to learn how to sell and open up doors and opportunities. So I had to teach them those type of skills. And... My kids, my three older kids, one thing they know, because they've heard me in the back seat on Bluetooth and hearing me in the car, pitching and coaching, they know how to sell, which is a skill I wanted them to learn. I want you to know how to sell. Next thing, at the end of this deal, last question here is, what type of commitment, what type of commitment are you willing to put forth and actually say, you know what? I'm going to overcome this guilt from working from home, what type of commitment? Because people say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make a commitment, but not follow through. Commitment to get this done. Commit, but follow through. Commit, but follow through. A lot of people commit, but they don't follow through. That's the problem why people put effort into the business, but they don't put time. They can't put time into the business, so therefore there's no consistency. But they want a lot of things. It's what we call start, stop. And sadly, momentum never gets 
in their corner to work on their behalf because they didn't put enough time, they didn't put enough consistency, put the effort one week off one week, one week off one week, you don't put enough time and consistency into your business. But think about this. Family, some things you need to consider. What type of commitment? I remember my wife and I saying, you know what? Um, perhaps, perhaps, we can go to the weddings, but instead of staying there all day for the wedding, we're there for two hours and we punch loose and we gotta run, we gotta run our business. What? You know, family celebration, you know, parties, birthday parties. Instead of all day celebrating, we'll actually show up on time Probably, how many guys have been invited to parties and they say three o'clock, but everybody gets there at six o'clock, right? So my wife said, hey babe, let's, let's take advantage of actually showing up on time and, and, and enjoy their company. When we know everybody's showing up late, enjoy their company, have some conversations you know, in a small group versus every, when everybody else gets there. And we actually have quality time. So we did that. Same thing with weddings, parties. You know, one of the things about weekends and holidays, you know, we, 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 we committed to it. I said, listen, I want to live a life where every day is a holiday, where every day I celebrate Mother's Day, every day I celebrate our anniversary, every day I celebrate our wedding, every day I celebrate your birthday, every day is New Year's Eve, because we're not operating on a Monday through Saturday type of calendar. See, entrepreneurs don't operate in a Monday through Sunday calendar. You're on, you're off. Are you free? Are you focused? Is this a, is this a money day? It's not Monday or Sunday. It's on or you're off. Are you making money today? Are you working on your business or are you working in your business? By the way, this is another video. Uh, looking at mentoring. Who's going to coach you and mentor you in this process and making sure that your commitments actually are held accountable? You're, uh, you're held accountable to your commitments. Do you hire somebody to do that? Do you have a mentor that you can enlist, to, that you can recruit to be your mentor to hold you to your word. Uh, by the way, this process, I'm reminded of our conversation with, uh, with Patrick and David the last five and a half years, our mentoring with Patrick and David the last five and a half years. He says, listen, temporary, you will, temporary you'll hate me, but permanently you'll love me. Can I say that my relationship with Patrick and David has always been a rose garden? Of course not. There's been times we've been called out. There's been times where our, our performance has been questioned. Our efforts have been questioned. Uh, our, 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 our performance has been questioned, but it's always meant to do this. Hey, Patrick, we're emptying our cup every time we talk to you. Teach us, because I don't got no time to waste. I ain't got no time to waste. If I did something wrong, I want to know now. So therefore, I course correct it. I know you're going to coach me. You're going to mentor me in the best interest of our family. I trust you in doing that. That's, what you, that's the, the relationship you should have with your mentor. That they have the best interests of you, regardless if you like them or not. That Say, you know what? If you want me to be a mentor, friend is second. Friendship is third, right? But you told me to be a mentor to you. No problem. Friend, friendship is second and third. And throughout this process, have we liked him all the time? He probably hadn't liked us all the time, but you know what we said? Let's commit to this process and let's trust, let's trust him. And make a long story short, the last five and a half years, we've earned over $5.4 million. You think it was worth it? You think it'd be worth it to you? If a jarhead like me can figure this out with no college degree, no inheritance, but by writing a system and a process and, and having a deep discussion about all these different areas, uh, these, these different markers, you can have the same potential success if you're willing to do the work. The question is this, last but not least, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Let, 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 me, let me wrap it up with, the, with this one last fact. In Denver, there's no such thing anymore as a middle class. That's the direction of our country. There's zero such thing as a middle class. Right now, it's $63,000 a year to just subsist. When we're, when we're looking at living in a big city, it says here in this article in CNBC, $350,000 a year to live in a middle class lifestyle in a big city. And they break down the numbers. $350,000, and here's, here's a sad truth. Here's what the sad truth is. Sad truth is 5% of households, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, earn over $350,000 per year. So if your desire is to say, you know what, I wanna be a multimillionaire, I wanna be a first generation cash flow millionaire, you cannot feel guilty. I hope that you don't feel guilty about the process and the journey that you're on because here's what's really guilty. That mommy, poppy, can I do this? When kids talk to you, mommy, poppy, can I do this? And you say, oh man, you know, I just don't have it. Can't afford it. Next time, next time.
He keeps saying that next time, a month, next time for a year, next time for three years, next time for five years. Boom, next thing you know, they're out of the house. Mom, dad, you keep saying next time, next time, next time, and I'm grown. And you know, you know what they're saying? I don't trust your word. When you say next time, you don't really mean it. Like you give them like hope that you never followed through with. Or for some of you have aging parents. And I want to put them in this neighborhood of this retirement community, this type of quality care, and you get angry of how the nurses treat your loved ones, your mom and dad, because you put in a substandard healthcare facility. How are you going to feel guilty then? Are you going to feel guilty? How are you going to feel guilty? How are you going to get over that? You know why? Because you say, you have to tell yourself, hey, yeah, I, I wanted those options, but I didn't really make the sacrifice. I over-celebrated, and I really didn't make the commitment. That's what you have to reconcile. So the guilt you have to ask yourself is, do I have guilt because I failed to make and follow through a decision? Or do I have joy and peace and confidence saying, hey, this whole process, it was worth it. At this point, I want to know your thoughts. Drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to know, again, your feedback, which is the, ins the inspiration to this topic today from you. Because I know we all go through this journey, especially for those of you that have never had a millionaire in your family or never had a mentor or somebody to look up to when you were growing up as an example of what it takes to actually really build a business. Because one thing is I don't, have a, I don't have a guilt about. Yeah, do I put in hours? Of course. But do I include and integrate my kids into everything that we do? Absolutely. My kids have the opportunity to have met, my kids have the opportunity to have met uh, Kevin Hart. My kids have had the opportunity to see the late, great Kobe Bryant. My kids had the opportunity to uh, see a lot of, uh, my kids wanted to see the Jabberwockies and they got to meet the Jabberwockies. You know, my, my kids wanted to meet some famous people and get inspired by the people. And, and you could you can imagine the conversation at school back after the summer said, oh, who did you spend the summer with? Oh, Kevin Hart. And here's a Snapchat video. Uh, 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 Jojo, who did you spend the summer with? Oh, the late, great Kobe Bryant and President George W. Bush. What? Here's the pictures. And the conversations are happening. And the parents are wondering, what does mom and dad do? What type of exposure are these kids, are these kids going through with their parents making these type of big decisions? And they say, no, when they grow up, they're not intimidated by people with big identities. They're not intimidated by people with big titles. They're not intimidated by people who make a lot of money. You know why? Because they were raised in that conversation and they say, you know what? Mom and dad were raised me in this conversation. I'm talking to other people of that stature, of that nature. And I say, you know what? I belong. I just need to ask questions for me at this point to say, you know what? Let me earn what they've earned so I can live the life that they live. And many others have made the sacrifice, put the time, the effort, the consistency to earn it, to live and breathe and enjoy the fruits of their labor. Again, I want to know your thoughts. Drop them in the comment section below. By the way, at the recording of this video, we're excited to launch our new Seven Figure Squad merch site. Uh, the launch date is to be determined, but go to our website at Seven Figure Squad and check out the merch, and you'll be one of the first people put in your email, and you'll be one of the first people notified when we launch our merch site, so therefore you can get your Seven Figure Squad shirts, hats, beanies, hoodies, backpacks, pillows, the whole shebang, coffee mugs, socks, the whole shebang, so it reminds you how to think like a millionaire, how to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become the first generation cash flow millionaire in your family, and your family's changed. That being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be money smart today.